Let's jump right in with an example. Let's consider design-build financing for the Apex Apartments. And um, this example is actually abstracted from a real-world problem. I've simplified it a bit and changed a few things around, but it's a very, very close to a real-world uh, potential project. Okay, so the Apex Apartments, if built, Put that in here. If built, are going to be a multi story graduate student housing complex in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, near Bucknell University. And this is a project under consideration by Core Asset Group, which does this type of uh, off site. Uh, student housing for various colleges and universities on, along the East Coast. Um, so what would the opportunity be here for Core Asset Group or CAG? Why would, they, why would they want to do this? Well, here's the scenario which I've painted for us. Bucknell is primarily focused on its liberal arts and existing colleges, and it's thinking about expanding its graduate, its engineering division uh, into graduate in a much bigger way. So in other words, to have many more master's programs in various engineering disciplines. They're not, however, as part of this planned expansion, planning to build any new housing for their grad students. And also, CAG notices, a lot of work goes into this, we're covering it very quickly, that the rental vacancy rate in the area is already pretty low. So they anticipate there is going to be um, a lot more demand, and there is not a lot of housing already available to meet that new demand by graduate engineering students. Um, and let me just see if I can uh, get Uh, down to another page. I think I can there. Um, a little bit more about uh, CAG. CAG is a, a real private equity firm that specializes in institutional quality student housing assets. Um, they acquire, manage, and operate multi-tenant housing venues throughout the U.S. and they were founded around 1998. Okay, so again, first thing CAG is going to do is a feasibility study, which is our quick and dirty check to see if this project might work without considering any time value, or as Professor Odea has already taught you, the mathematics of money. Okay, so we won't even we won't even need any time uh, value of money considerations, and they're also going to do a what we call fully financed by equity basis. That means the whole project would be financed out of CAG's own funds, okay, without taking out any construction loans or anything else, okay. As I say, this is usually our first step. Why is it our first step? It's because this finance by equity only assumption is very conservative. It maximizes your taxes generally, and it minimizes our financial leverage. That's the increased return that we get out of a project by taking out some loans to help us execute it. Um, so if the feasibility study passes this, it's going to look even better when we start putting in some leverage and considering time value of money. And it also is a very good way, if it doesn't pass this test, there's no hope for it. So it's a very good way to quickly reject nominal projects. Okay, so I've got an Excel file available to you for this example called apex.xls, and a lot of what I'm going to be showing you uh, from now on is coming from that Excel file. Um, I'm just going to uh, jump into it quickly here, uh, and just so you can see what's going on. Here it is. This is for our financial plan uh, lecture. Um, 
but we're going to start with the feasibility page here. Um, and as you can see, we've got the basic information, um, which I'll cover with you in just a second. We've got development parameters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this spreadsheet works its way down to finding out how much money we think that they're going to, they could make on this project in a few different scenarios. Expected value scenario, that's our target scenario, poor situation scenario, and great situation scenario. Okay, so we'll come, we'll come back to that uh, in a bit. So let's go, let's go back to our presentation now. Okay, so this information, as I just showed you very quickly, uh, is in the APEX spreadsheet on the feasibility page. Um, so what does CAG have to know to see if this project is going to be feasible for them? First, they have to have a site. They've already uh, decided on a potential site. It's a one-acre site in the area. Uh, it's unbilt. The asking price is $50,000. we are going to assume that that's what they're going to pay for it. So it's raw land, no utilities, no sidewalks, uh, et cetera. It does have electric water and sewer on the street. <coughs> so the general specifications that CAG wants and assumptions are as follows. Based on their experience doing this type of thing for other colleges on the East Coast, they think that they're going to be best off for grad students making two bedroom apartments at 900 square feet per unit. Um, they think that they're going to have to set aside 10% of the space per unit for circulation. So for in other words, for every apartment they make, they're going to need nine square feet of circulation. Uh, they're going to do wood frame construction with no basement. Um, and this is going to be a two-story building here. And both of these things come from the local codes around Lewisburg. Um, they're going to offer two spaces per unit of parking. Uh, they think they can do this whole thing, okay, time from purchasing the land to selling the property to someone who's going to be a property manager. I think they can do the whole thing in 12 months. Um, the if they do that, they're going to need that 90% of all the units are going to be rented. They don't think they can buy a buyer, a buyer who would be a cash flow producing property manager. They don't think they can find a buyer in the area unless they have rental agreements in place for at least 90% of the units. They're also assuming that grad students will take 12-month leases, which I think is a little dodgy, but they claim they've done this before and it works for them. Okay, So whenever you get something like this set of specifications and assumptions, it's always a good idea to question them and go over them with whoever you're working for in the firm, your managing director, or whoever you're working for as a consultant. Like I said, I think this is a little bit dodgy. I think this timing might be pushing it to. If I were consulting on this project for CAG, these are two things I'd want to discuss with them. Okay, we also have more on the local zoning that CAG needs to be familiar with. Okay, um, this area is zoned for multifamily housing and or retail and commercial, so they don't need any kind of zoning exception to get in here. Uh, the maximum building height is two stories. That's where our two stories came from. Uh, the maximum number of units allowed for two-bedroom apartments per acre is 34. Additionally, they need about 15% of the site area for setbacks, 15% for circulation outside the building, site circulation. 
There are various other local code open space requirements, not including parking, that take up about 10 percent of the acre. And the for parking, the local zoning code says they need 100 square foot per acre, and they need one parking space per two-bedroom unit. So CAG is going to double that because they have found that for their demographic, the grad students each want to have a parking space, okay? Two graduate students typically living per apartment, and they each want a parking space. Okay, so in terms of development parameters, um, We've got here the first thing that CAG wants to do is say, considering all the things that the local zoning is making us do, are we going to be able to fit 34 units in this acre? And if not, how many units can we fit into this space? So for the building setbacks, they need 15% of an acre, which you can check this, works out to 6,534 square feet. Similarly for circulation, open space requirements, a tenth of an acre is 4,356 square feet. Um, so you subtract this from an acre and you get what is available to build before they consider the parking, okay? And they want to build as simple a building as possible, so they'll assume that each story has 17 units on it, housing units on it. Um, and so how much area are they going to need for all the parking? Well, they have 34 apartments uh, times 2 times 100, so they get uh, 6,800. So now we have to subtract that. And the first floor footprint available after parking is now uh, about 19,000 square feet and change. And um, what we want to compare this to is the first floor space required for the target number of units, 15,300, plus the first floor space required for circulation and common, which is 16,830. So they have available, this is bigger than required, the available is bigger than required. So in fact, it's bigger than required by 2,500 square feet and change. So this is okay. So they can go ahead on this property without violating any building codes. They can go ahead and build this two-story wood frame building, 34 two-bedroom units total, 15 on the, 17 on the first floor, 17 on the second floor. Okay, so here it is in summary. It might look might look something like what we see in this picture here. So the total square footage of the building, first and second floor, is going to be 33,600 square feet and change.